everybody. Welcome to Midweek Live. A little chance to chat on a Tuesday night and kind of get into things for a little bit. See, there's this, there's this fine line that separates dead religion from meaningful life change. There's this really fine line that we're talking about. And that fine line is what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be addressing and exploring that fine line through, of all things, a Justin Bieber song. I don't know if you've heard it, but it just came out not too long ago. And the song is called Holy. And some of the lyrics, they go like this. It says, I hear a lot about sinners. Don't think that I'll be a saint. But I might go down to the river, uh, because the way that the sky opens up when we touch, yeah, it's making me say that the way you hold me, 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 makes me feel so holy, 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 holy on God. And then Chance the Rapper chimes in and he says, I know I ain't leaving you like I know he ain't leaving us. I know we believe in God and I know God believes in us. They keep coming back to this refrain over and over again. They keep coming back to this thing where they, where they basically say that the way you hold me makes it feel holy. And as I think about that it, it, and as I listen to the song, it's kind of a blurred reality. Like they're not quite distinct about it, whether it's just, whether it's just this person that he loves that's holding him and that makes it feel holy or if it's God that's it's holding them and it's making them feel holy. And, and I think that's obviously on purpose, so there's a feeling to it. There's this thing that they're getting to. But it brings up a question, especially as this last weekend we talked about taking off this religious mask. And the question is this. What is holy? Like what is holy? And, and who gets to decide what's holy and what's not holy? Is it, is it stained glass windows? I mean, they're beautiful. They're lovely. I like being in a place where there's stained glass windows because it's, not, it's nice. Is that what makes a place holy? Is it uh, organ music piped out into the heavens? Big, gigantic organ. Maybe you grew up in a church like that. Is holy a wedding ceremony? Is it that moment where everybody feels this sacredness around a moment? Is it the birth of a baby? That seems holy on a lot of accounts. Is it the climb to the summit of a mountain or is it a first kiss? What's holy? Or is it the, the worshipful song on your lips when you're singing those songs with a bunch of other people and you're singing it out and belting it out together and worship to God? Is that, is that holy? Or is it the life that hits rock bottom but then is lifted up by this, this hope that they find, this hope in a savior, this, this goodness that brings them out of being on rock bottom? Is it the fringes of society where one human meets another and then they have these gestures of, of love in the form of food or of, of clothing or of, of a kind word or, or of a hug or this, this goodness? What, what is it that makes something holy? How do we have these moments that we know that something is, is holy? We experience it. We, we feel it for ourselves. What's holy? As we, as we look at these things, and apparently you all don't think the organ music is holy. I've heard some organ music. Let me tell you, I've heard some organ music. It can be holy, <laughs> but here it is, right? What is, what is holy? All of these things are holy, and, and none of these things. Every last moment that we've just talked about, and, and none of them are holy. Because it's, it's not the thing that makes it holy. It's not the, the experience or the, the, the glass that we have right here that, that we can touch and feel. That's, that's not the holy thing. That's not what makes it holy. 
The only thing that makes something holy is the way that that thing or that experience or that relationship or that feeling and how it guides your gaze towards worship of God. In Romans, Paul says this. It's in Romans 1, 25. He says, they traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. In that moment, Paul is talking about um, this group of people that in the very beginning traded worship for, uh, of God for worshiping these, these, these literal things. That they began to worship the physical stuff that God created or the experience that they have when they're in a situation rather than God himself. They traded the truth for a lie. They worshiped and served created things rather than worshiping the creator. What makes something holy? Something is holy when it steers our gaze and worship towards God. That's what makes something holy. When, when our, our gaze is, is pushed upward towards God, that's what makes it holy. There's nothing wrong with, with stained glass windows. They can be holy as anything. And serving in a soup kitchen or a, a food pantry can actually be, that can actually be an unholy thing. If you go into there with a cynical attitude, not expecting to see God work in any way whatsoever, that can be the most unholy situation ever. It's all in how we view things. It's all in our perspective. Mike, last weekend, talked about having this religious mask that we mindlessly go through the motions with, right? The, these things that we put on or we hold on to or these actions that we do to make us look good rather than to actually experience God or live for God and, and live a faith-filled life. It's when we do the actions without thinking. It's when we, it's when we point to things or experiences or, or emotions and call them holy, holy and, and think that they make us holy when in fact we're just going through the motions. But we don't allow them to point us to God and let them be part of the way that God transforms us. That, that's what happens when we wear the religious mask. We, we do these things and we don't actually allow them to change us and to shape us. We just, we just do them because it looks good. It, it makes us look religious. And we think that's a good thing for some reason. In, in Matthew, Jesus, he's, he's describing God's kingdom. He's describing how things all fit together. He's describing how it's going to be one day when everything kind of gets finished up. And, and it's Matthew 25, and these are the verses that it says. It says, Then the king will say, this is Jesus speaking, To those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me then these righteous ones will reply lord when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you and the king will say i tell you the truth when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters you were doing it to me Faith in Jesus and, and holiness and experiencing God. When you have that moment of being on a, like sacred or holy ground, it's when you're being who God wants you to be. It's when you're in those moments and you're looking to God and they're guiding to you towards God and, and being in awe or wonder of God because of, of you placing yourself in that moment it looks like being inspired by God to live for him. It's experiencing and wondering at God's grace and goodness wherever it's found. If you're in an ancient church with stained glass windows that stretch to the sky and you are in awe of how beautiful it is and you think someone spent the time to craft this in such a way that they want to magnify who God is and you are just in awe of it and in awe of God and in who, would be in, who would have inspired something like this, that is a holy moment. And at the same time, like Jesus said in those verses, you can be on the fringes of what's considered safe. 
You can be on the fringes of, of life and of the most downtrodden, most difficult, most on the fringes sort of situations and circumstances. And you can find people in those places and you can spend time and you can hear stories and you can love them and you can serve people in those situations. And you can end up being the one that gets the bigger gift in the end. Simply because you realize that in that moment you are serving God. And it's holy. And it's not about religion. It's about seeing God in others. It's about seeing and being drawn to wonder of worship at humanity and the beauty of things. And so it might, as we think about this, as we think about who God is, as we think about taking this religious mask off, as we think about what's holy and what's not, and who gets to decide, what we can know is this, is that God has created this incredible world, and he has filled it with people who he created in his image. And as we see this created beauty in this created world and we, we see the, the things that people created in God's image take the time to create, to honor and magnify God, we can begin to see that we can be inspired too. We can be in awe of who God is. We can be in awe of what he's created. We can experience holy moments when we slow down long enough to have our eyes lifted up towards heaven because we're inspired by what we see and experience in a thing or in a person or in a circumstance. When we sit in a, a church someday, hopefully soon, we can't wait. But when we do that, and we all sing together, and you hear the chorus, and you get this feeling. That moment will be holy if it's not the feeling you worship, but it's the God who grants it and gives it to you as a gift to remember and know how good he is. Holiness might even be found in a Justin Bieber song called Holy. We would do well in this day and time to look for the holy right now. We would do well to take off the religious mask we wear to make ourselves look good and instead open ourselves up to God's work that's all around us. We would do well to realize that it's not the stuff, it's not the physical matter, but it's the things that inspire us to look to God that make things holy, that make things holy. And when we take the religious mask off and think it's not about just the things that we do or the actions that we repeat on a habit, but it's actually these things that draw us closer to God, I think we will find ourselves experiencing many more holy moments in many more places than we ever thought possible. So with that, Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for spending some time with me as we talk about what's holy, as we talk about taking the religious mask off, knowing that it's more than religion, but it's actually a faith and a belief in God that draws us up to this better place. May you be inspired tonight. May you be inspired to experience holiness, not because you go through the motions, but because you actually experience this faith in real ways and you live it in real ways too. So with that, may you all have a fantastic night, and I will see you next Tuesday. Good night.